everybody. Welcome to this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. We're talking about clinics today. You know, I was at my local rink recently and I was thinking about a lot of the clinics I did as a kid, but also that we're getting to that time of the year where clinics are starting to pop up for the off season. And we wanted to do an episode, uh, not just about the off season, but clinics in general, what to look for, uh, you know, good, bad, red flags, everything in between, and really how to get the most out of them uh, for your money, for your time, uh, for your kids' development and for their sanity, for lack of a better reason. So enjoy this episode all about that. And also want to remind you that uh, Christy and I wrote a book. It's called When Hockey Stops. You can check that out at whenhockeystops.com for exclusive pre-order access and some free gifts. Um, if you support the show and you want to support us, that's a great way to do it. So again, check that out at whenhockeystops.com. And I'm going to stop now so that you can watch this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey about clinics. Enjoy. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world, and welcome to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. I'm Lee Elias, and I'm joined, as always, by Christy Casciano burns and Mike Benelli. And if you're watching this episode, coming to you recorded live from my new studio here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, for those of you listening, it looks like a locker room. Uh, we are moving. We are moving up in the world because of you, because of this audience growing every single week. We get nothing but positive feedback, so we appreciate that. But let's get into today's topic, because we know that's what you're here for. We're talking about clinics today. Clinics, hockey clinics, because as we get closer to the spring, even though we're still in January, we're getting lots of questions about the offseason and what clinics should I take in the season, out of the season. So today is going to be your 101 from especially the expert Mike Benelli, what to look for when picking a clinic, what questions to ask, what to ask your kid, what to think about skill wise. Is it too much? Is it too little? Should I pay this much? Should I not do it? All those questions and more will be answered today on our kids play hockey guys i'm not gonna lie that was one of my smoother opens i was feeling that one today very good thanks <laughs> thanks mike i appreciate it so let's just start with the basics guys uh when we look at clinics as a whole uh mike i'm gonna start with you there's look, look there's several types of clinics basically down to the, the skill sets right there's there's the skating clinics which is usually called power skating um sometimes there's shooting clinics there's goalie clinics um, and then sometimes there's just overall skill clinics. So Mike, again, if I'm a parent, let's just say, uh, you know, I coach a kid and ate you like I do, uh, or I'm new to the game, right? What, what direction do I go in? Cause there's so much out there. Yeah. So I think the first step you need is to understand like, what is the, like, what is the fundamental piece of the game that you want to work on? So the, the clinic really is a supplemental opportunity for something that maybe your child isn't getting in practice so because all of us you know we have our team practices you can only work on so much i mean you, you you know you know power skating i'm not a big power skating guy i'm a big you know let's learn how to properly skate person right. so right. that if you can incorporate clinics um into your daily routine and if it's not like a clinic right after a two-hour practice it's a clinic that supplements your season then i'm all for it I think it's a great way to, you know, goaltenders are always the ones that get um, the short end of practice because it's just, there's not enough coaches out there that cater right, practice right. to goalies. So goalies traditionally are the ones that have to seek out these extra, you know, lessons right. and, and programming. Um, but ultimately the only, the, the, the biggest takeaway I think is that when you look for a clinic, look for something that supplements a piece of your child's game that they're not getting in practice. It, it could be multiple things, but you want to make sure that it's not, you know, practice Monday, clinic Tuesday, practice Wednesday, clinic Thursday, right, practice right. Friday, early morning clinic Saturday, two much. games, yeah. and you just have to find a way. So the spring is a great time to look and choose different aspects of the child's game where it's less commitment. It's probably a lot cheaper. It gives you an opportunity to explore different types of coaches and really fill in the gaps that your child might be missing. Right. And there are a lot of clinics that are going to pop up in the spring. And what we always did, and we've done a lot of clinics over the years, and we've done our homework before we signed our kids up for that. Just like you would go on a restaurant review page just to see what the reputation of the restaurant is, how's the food. You can do the same thing with a hockey clinic by talking yeah. to other hockey parents, the ones, you know, go to the parent with a kid who's a couple of years older and say, hey, have you ever done this clinic? Uh, what are they getting out of it? How much time are they spent on the ice? Is it just run by a bunch of high school kids trying to make money and the coach just, you know, takes off and says, hey, kids, run the clinic. You want somebody in charge of that clinic who's got skills and who knows how to manage young kids. Um, it's not just going to take your money and run. Um, just because it's a clinic doesn't mean that your kids are going to get a lot out of it. 
So we've always talked to other parents say, hey, you know, your, your kid, I heard your kid did this clinic. What did you think about it? Was it worth it? Um, and they may steer you in another direction. Uh, we got lucky one year when this one parent said, oh no, don't do that clinic. Do the, because we knew, he knew our kid wanted to work on his shooting skills um, rather than skating. He said, this Turcotte clinic is coming into town. I got to tell you, it's really good. Joey loved it. And uh, it, it was one of the best clinics he ever went to. Uh, they were very, very good with him. They did a videotape at the end and actually showed him, you know, before and after what he worked on, his improvements, what more he needed to work on. So my advice is before you sign up, do your homework, talk to other parents, see if there's any online reviews. That'll help you too. Yeah, That's and, that, and that, that being said, Christy, too, that look for clinics and, and, and what they're defined as. Like, there's a big difference between a, a, like a, just a workout. You pay 25 bucks and you go out and they call it a clinic. But all you're doing is a coach is putting you through a bunch of drills. I, I always look through, you know, ROI. You know, what am I paying for? If, if I'm paying more and there's a lot less kids and I really get a, a great coach to be able to pinpoint something for my child, that to me is worth the extra $10 an hour. If it's 65 kids on the ice and they're quote unquote doing power skating where they're in six lines and they're just going down and out up the ice. You know, I don't know. I could do that in public session. I mean, I think so. So be careful about, you know, what the clinic is defined as and then ask, is it a clinic or is it just a workout? Is it just yeah. repetitive? Hot? Cause you know, there's a saying, right. You, you, you want to get, you, if you really want to get really, really good at being bad, do this the wrong thing over and over and over right. again. Right. So, right. You, you know, if you want to be a really bad, good skater, then, just take bad power skating classes. Right. And I think it's just, uh, you know, that's what you got to look out for. Is it a workout or is it actually an instructional piece that you could add to your child? Because if it's not, then just go to the playground. You'll have better chance of getting better. Yeah, you're hitting all the right notes here. And I love that you mentioned the coach-kid ratio. That is so important. I found over the years, six to one seems to be a good ratio. Six kids to one coach. I, I think that is manageable. The kids get a lot out of it. The coach's eyes are really on the kids. Um, and also, you know, find out what the coach's experience is. You know, just because he says he, he's, he can coach your kids, what's his reputation? How much experience does he have? What's his level of coaching? All those questions are good ones to ask before you sign up and hand over your money. Yeah, and, and let's dive into some of these clinics because, look, I think, and we'll get into goalie ones in a little bit, but I think for forwards or just skaters, power skating is the most popular named clinic. Um, and I, I do want to say this. Look, most, I, I find this to be true. Most people, I, I get it, you know, say again, most clinics run in power skating are done by people that want to do a good job, okay? There are people out there that are just trying to money grab. So as Christy and Mike said, uh, you want to look for clinics that say limited availability. All right, that's important, right? If it's unlimited availability, that coach ratio to player is probably going to be crazy and your kid's not going to learn much. But when you look at power skating, you know, it's, I remember um, being 13 years old and I was a really fast skater, but also very uncontrolled. And I went to Robbie Glantz power skating. Um, and I did Tim Turcotte's nice. too. Yeah. Um, and invaluable information. Those clinics were so well run and they, they completely understood how to teach, uh, how to give focus and the, and the, exact mechanics that each level of skater needed, right? That clinic was invaluable. And, and that's what you want to look for. There are well-established power skating clinics out there that you can find, and they do make the rounds. Now, with that said, another big part of clinics, guys, is, you know, does your kid want to do it or not? All right. Ah. Um, I, I did share on, a, on a Our Kids Play Hockey Facebook page the other day, a great uh, message from Ray Ferraro about clinics that, Sometimes clinics are important, whether you want to do them or not, but you also want to make sure that your kid doesn't hate that they're going right now. Power skating is a good example. I remember when my dad signed me up for that, didn't necessarily like the idea of sprinting for an hour and being dog tired at the end, but then it was explained to me the value of it. And I did it. And I'll tell you what, I still to this day utilize things I learned from that when I was a teenager, right? So, so the value was there. Right. But if you get to the springtime in the summer, especially if you got a younger kid, again, the older kids don't typically have this issue. And the kid just wants to play soccer or do Taekwondo or whatever, let them do that. Cause at the younger, we always split the show up between younger developmental and, and higher develop, develop, developmental, excuse me. 
it's actually more, and Mike, please comment on this. It's probably more valuable for your younger child. Again, that's kind of eight to 12 to be playing multiple sports as a development technique. Okay. If you, if you bury your younger kid in clinics and four teams and hockey 12 months a year, which has been proven to not be good, which we still make this mistake for some reason, I don't know what you're doing adversely. If your kid is 12 and up and, and hockey is their life and they really love it and they've played other sports and they want to do clinics, they want to do shooting clinics. They want to do power skating, have that conversation with them. Breaks are also important. Anyway, Mike, let me throw it to you again, because um, kind of keep it on the power skating and what I said about, you know, having a conversation with your kid. Right. Uh, yeah. There's and a I balance. Think, and I think there. you're, and you're yeah. the adult, you know, so you're the one that right. has to say, listen, do you really, you know, do you really feel you can get value out of some skating classes? Yeah, dad, I'd love to do that. Okay. Right. Well now let's now let me, let me, I, I'll kind of address this as a director, like somebody that works with coaches on learning how to coach and works with a lot of coaches actually on how to develop, you know, a brand right. in clinics. Right. So one of the things you want to find, and it's hard, there's no doubt about it, because I think a lot of a lot of what power skating coaches do is just say, I was a top level figure skater. I'm a great power skater. I can flip and dip and run on two edges and one edge, and I can do a tumble salt. And, and, and then, you know, and your child can't do those things, right? This player has accomplished what they've accomplished. So what I would look for, if I'm looking for a clinic, I'm looking for somebody that runs a system. I'm looking for somebody that I don't need a workout. I don't need to be dog tired at the end, right. you know, and I cringe when I'm like, oh, you know, and this is like our friend, Daryl Belfry, right? He'll talk about this all the time about, well, does it look like, is the kid sweating? Are they breathing heavy? And were they always moving? Well, a parent think that's a good clinic. Right, right. Like, that's well, a great point, Mike. That's a great point. Like, Sweaty heads that, go to bed, right? We always come to the that. field, come to the field for free. And I'll do that to your kid for free, <laughs> right? Yeah. So what is the value you're looking for? Well, I want a coach that has a system. I want a head coach or, or an instructor or some, whoever the name is to have trained people. I don't care if they're 14 year old kids working with seven year olds, but they have a system and they have a progressionary program in place. Exactly. Number one is what I'm looking for. Run away from the clinic that says, I'm going to give you four hours of ice. I'm going to, your kids are going to be dead and their, and their, and their legs are going to be noodles. That's a workout. That's training. That's something different. That's not teaching. And I think if we, we can think about what, what am I looking for? I'm looking for somebody that has a progressionary program. Yes, the reputation's great, but are they going to put my child in a place where it's not subjective? I know that I could see something on the first day of the clinic and on week eight, I see something else. Yeah. And what is that gap? And if I can find those coaches, yeah. that's where I'm going after. That's what you're paying for. Right. So, so let's, let's just emphasize that. Don't pick the clinic because just because it has good reputation, but is it good for your kid? Right. It's a good Because you have specific things for your kid. Well, there's plenty of people that, that, that listen, the, ma the, the, the large majority of parents think that the kids working hard and sweating and leaving tired is good. And it is good in a way. I mean, if, if you don't mind paying 28 bucks to have your kid do a workout, great. But if you're going, if you, if you're looking for a specific skill development and let's, right. we're talking about skating right now, then get me a coach that's going to almost micro teach what right. that stride is. Right. And depending right. on the age, I'm not probably, I'm not talking about, you know, the different radiuses of blade touch on the ice <laughs> to a six-year-old. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm probably playing tag and they're turning backwards and forward totally. and pivoting. Like, but as I get older and kids start to learn, and they start to learn angles of their knee, where their hip is, where their body is, how their how their stick leads, all those kind of things. It, it from an outsider's point of view, looks boring, and it is boring, but it's fundamentally a way to teach, and it's not drilling. Right. Don't go for the don't for the if you're well, gonna go to a clinic to learn, don't drill. Learn. Teach. We should also talk about like what's the definition of the word clinic. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. right. That's a, you know, it's a clinic. It's, it's not, it's not a workout. Mike, that's a really great point that you're making. And like, it's look, the best clinics I ever went to, I learned a tremendous amount. And like, what I remember about, I'm going to keep using that Tim Turcotte one because I like, I remember it. I, I'm, I'm actually surprised how much <laughs> I, I remember. Oh, yeah. his skills were uh, night and day. 
You're well, just... there's a reason why there's a reason why Turcotts and Skinners and Robbie Glanzes and, and, and our area around here, Eric Nates. And there's a reason why these people could be in business for 20 years. It's right. not because they have a, you know, they 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 they've developed a name, but they System. produce success. Yeah. And yeah. and and it's not based off of, you know, oh yeah, oh, what do you think about that guy? Oh, he works the hell out of my kid. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. <laughs> but what has he learned and, and right. what is he and what is he left with? And I think at the end of the day, when you could find players, people that have systems. Yeah. Whether it's whether it's Tim Turk in a shooting system, whether it's Robbie Glanz in a special skating system, where it's Laura Stam or Barbara Williams or whoever it is, find a way to 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 like that type of system yeah. and then embrace it and then use that as the building blocks of your child's development. That's a great idea. Great, great, yeah. great. Love everything uh, you're I, saying. Go ahead, go ahead, Christy. Well, <laughs> The other thing, right, it just came to mind. I, re I remember this one clinic we signed up for and I did not check the facility itself. Had I known that the rink was going through problems, it was breaking down, you know, yeah. almost every week. I wouldn't have signed them up for that clinic because we signed them up, the rink broke down. So then they had it, oh, we're going to do everything outside now for the kids, uh, which was on for them. Yeah. But that's not what, that's not what you paid um, for. our intent was. That's not what I wanted our kids to work on. So just a, just a little heads up. You may want to also just check the facility itself. That's a great point. Yeah, Thank especially you. if you live in an area with yeah. older rinks. Like, like yeah, I said, most, most rinks now have four or five rink facilities. But yeah, if you have yeah. an older rink, uh, yeah. it's funny. I did that. I did the Tim Turcotte in, a, in an older rink outside Philadelphia in a place called Wissahickon. Um, you know, before we're going to, I'm going to jump into red flags in a minute. The last thing I just wanted to say from a player point of view, what I remember about that Tim Turcotte school was, I, you know, I remember going in being very confident in my skating. I remember feeling that way. I'm the fastest kid on my team. I've got a gift. You know, I remember thinking that and I remember day one, you know, like drill one or drill two. I was like, oh man, I'm not good at any of this stuff. Like he had me doing drills that I just couldn't do. And yeah. I remember Two things. I remember not liking at that age being uncomfortable. And I remember now looking back, very happy that I was not uncomfortable because it challenged me to become better. And I left that far better than I was when I came in. All right. The other thing too with clinics, guys, we talk about the shooting clinics, uh, goalie clinics. It's the same mentality, right? As Mike said, find a system, find someone who's going to go through a shot. It's not just taking a thousand shots a clinic. It's taking good shots. I'd rather my kid take 50 good shots than a thousand bad shots. Because Mike, as you said, it's about mechanics. It's about muscle memory, especially when you get older, you want to learn a skill. Muscle memory is the way to do it. And Mike, as you said, very boring doing the same thing over and over and over again, 50 times in a row, but that's how you build muscle memory. That's how you do it. It's funny because I still do drills like that in my basement. You know, my kids downstairs running around you know, I got this ball. I got this pocket. I'm just shooting. That's what I want him to do. Just have fun. And I'm down there forward pass, backhand, forward hand, forward hand, back pass, forward hand. He's like, dad, that's so boring. And I said, I know. I just, I love the grind, son. He'll get there one day. Maybe. Um, let's just go into red flags real quick. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into a dangerous one. All right. Uh, we did a show months ago. You guys should listen to about showcases. And this, this red flag was in showcases. It's also in clinics. If you meet a coach, or you meet an organization that says, oh, yeah, no, we have tryouts in the spring. If you want to make the team, you should do this clinic because all the kids who make the team do this clinic. That's, that's dangerous to me if it's done the wrong way. It's all about how it's verbalized. If an organization says, and Mike, definitely want your thoughts on this. An organization says, no, we don't. provide this clinic. It's recommended, not necessary, but we provide this clinic. But if anybody says to you, well, you can't make my team unless you do the clinic, run run from that organization that, that is a money grab wow. and it's wrong and it does not create it, it's elitism. All right. We have, we have a major problem in this game with this already. All I right? agree. Wrong, yeah. wrong, wrong, wrong. Shouldn't happen. Mike, I know you're, you're chopping at the bit here. Go ahead. Jump in. I know. I think it's right. I think it's, it, it's a definitely, it's a, it's a, if you, if you can find yourself a pre tryout ID clinic for tryouts, Go for it. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. You, you hear, you know, where, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to the pre ID tryout for the tryout. So it's a pre tryout clinic just so I could get identified for the tryout. Please run away from those. Just find a way to say, you know, it, like my advice to a parent, if you really listen, 
Yeah, I don't want to get myself in trouble with the big <laughs> clinic guys. But don't get in trouble, Mike. Don't do it. Do it. If we you're if you're a parent and you're influential, right? I don't care if your kid's the worst kid on the team, the best kid on the team. You have an, you're, you're an influential parent. You're the you're the mom or dad that sits up and you know buys everybody a cup of coffee and then bitches and talks and say, oh, this is how it should be done. Mike, right? I, I feel like you got someone right in your mind right now. So I do. I have four, <laughs> four people. They'll be in the scroll. I'll scroll them. In right. So, right. <laughs> so fine. You, you know what you do? You say to those six people, you know what's a better ROI? I got this guy, girl, <clears throat> great coach. We're all going to spend $150. We're going to rent the ice. And our yeah. six kids are going to find, are going to go into a, you know, it's the same thing. It's a pod. At, yeah. at the end of the day, find a way. You could cater. There's the, the, the idea that you have to go find clinics. But there's so many great hockey people out there. Right. Instead of building clinics, you're the consumer. If you're a parent on this podcast right now, you're the consumer. It's your money. You don't have to just go and go, oh, I got to, I got to, I just pay for the Friday night clinic. I guess that's what I do. No, <laughs> go out, get six parents, seven, 10 parents, and then rent the ice in the spring. It's cheap. It's the cheapest you're going to find it. Yeah. Rent the coach, rent the parent, get your 10 kids, and then specifically say, I have 10 weeks and I want this, 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 and this to be done. That's it. And let them go at it. You'll yeah. have, not only will you have a better experience, but you'll be able to cater the personality of the coach to your kids. You you could take the blame then for not doing it correctly. And, or you could take the credit for saying, wow, that was actually a much different like way for me to teach now. And the coaches in the area, if I'm that coach, I'm loving it. It's 10 kids. I get paid. Maybe I do another one right afterwards. And then I do another one right afterwards. It's easier to coach. It's better to coach in my in my mind it's it's, it's more fun because it's I was just going to say that way more fun you know, i've been in, i've been in those situations as a coach and they I are mean, way you see more these fun. guys that do the, the line yeah. drills and they're like you know they're checking their phone they're having a coffee <laughs> yeah. they're like they're looking at their watch there's it's another like, red flag if coach has his phone on the ice yeah if you have if you're if you're on doing stock <laughs> right. trades while you're doing <laughs> doing a, 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 an inside edge drill get me more microsoft come on guys i'll skate i'll skate, I'll skate. <laughs> it's wrong right so Sorry. you know Put a little of Bitcoin money away and go find a good coach and get your kids on the ice for 10 weeks. Yeah. You'll have a much, much better experience. And I'm not saying that the big clinics, you know, and, and, and programs are bad. There, there's, there's always room for that. And listen, if, if you do the, if you do the math and it's 20 bucks a session or $22 a session, wherever you live and, and your kids are active, you right. know what? That's not bad. But if you really want right. somebody to teach, like, that's why people go to hitting coaches. That's why goalies have goalie instructors. That's why tennis is so successful, right? Well, You're one, yeah. If, you, if I went to a tennis clinic and there was 47 kids <laughs> and my kid was the worst kid, do you really think he's going to – or actually, it might, the worst kid actually might get more attention. It's the middle kid. It's and, too right? many kids is the problem. And you're like, it, oh, you it, can't really yeah. fix a serve. You can't really fix skating. Well, listen, Mike, Mike how about drills. this as a red flag? How about this as a red flag? If you're just going to say that you went to this person's clinic, right? Oh, I, I went to Robbie Glantz. I did it. I did. That, that's, that's not good either. <laughs> right? you, want, you want to be able to take something. Again, I, I said Tim Turricott because we know that name. I took a lot out of that clinic. And this was in the 90s, right? Yeah, right. So, so before YouTube, before we had all these resources. So right. um that's another great point I want to bring up real quick to parents, kids. You have unlimited resources here to learn visually in terms of uh, YouTube and Google. You don't have access to the ice time all the time. I, I admit that, but there's so much you can do on your own. With that said, Mike, I, I got to bring this up too, um, you know, when looking for a coach. So again, I did a lot of private lessons when I was kind of in the middle school, high school level. Now I wanted to do it. I've always said this on the show. I started when I was 12. So from my point of view, this was all catch up for me. Right. And it wasn't I, I wasn't doing it because my sole goal was to get a scholarship and go play in the NHL. That was my dream. OK, but I was going to private lessons because I loved it. I loved it. And I had really, really, really good coaches. All right. One of my coaches names was Jason DiMatteo. He played for University of Minnesota. Uh, I'm sorry, he played for Minnesota. He'll help me if he said, if I hear me say that. All right. But he was home from, from college and he just loved coaching. He just wanted to give me everything. Another guy, Stefan Charbonneau out of Aston, former NHL player, loved to teach. He made me love those lessons. Now I was fortunate 
Um, we had the ability to do it, all right, financially and time-wise. Not everybody has that. I, I want to make sure I say that. But you can find yourself coaches that don't have a name that's been all over a billboard that really want to teach. When I was in college, right now after college, I coached too. In college, I spent my summers coaching high school kids. I loved it. I wanted to do it. I love being on the ice. So one point I want to make, clinic or private lesson or anything in between, the person that's in charge, the person running it, call them, talk to them. It should not just be a money grab, right? What can my kid expect from this clinic? You should interview them. You're not going to hound them, but you should talk to them and say like, hey, look, I want to know what's going to go on here and if it's a right fit for my kid. And if a coach is worth, worth their weight, all right, in gold, it's just a saying, if your kid's not a good fit, they'll say, you know what? This is too advanced, but here's a great clinic you can look at. Here's a great option for you to pursue, right? So it's more about the questions you ask and not the outcome. If you're looking for babysitters and look, don't get them wrong, parents. I am sometimes too. I'm looking for something for my kid to do for an hour so I can get something done sometimes. But if you're going to pay money, make sure it's a good investment. All right, make sure it's a good hour. And like Mike said it, and he's totally right. If you just want the... The hour, go play flag football. Go do do. There's there is stuff for free or that's ten bucks um, a session. Well, but don't to go forget outside. too. You you could you but by you know there's there's unintended consequences here sometimes of your kid agreeing that they want you know your eight year old saying oh yeah I I want to do that I want to catch up or I want to do that my friends are doing it and right. then you go to a right. clinic and there's so many kids it's so boring there's so much instruction that you actually drive the game away from the kids. Right, I mean, right. if you're, if you're, you know, especially in the spring and summer, we think we're developing the kids because, oh, they're in a line, Burn but they're out, man. bored out of their mind. Well, yeah. it's just, there's no inspiration. There's no like, like you want to have, if I, if you could get a coach, I, that's a great idea. You know, all these college kids are home, girls and boys. Yeah. yeah. I always say like, listen, I'd rather have, I'd rather hire somebody like a babysitter for my six-year-old, go on the ice, roll around. I can't roll around anymore. I, I can't even get up. So roll around, flip, dip, jump, tag, play Fun. duck, duck, Fun. goose, whatever you can do. That to me is a clinic for a six-year-old. To me, right. a clinic for a six-year-old is, I bet you can't slap that puck harder than me. Right. I bet you can't catch me. I bet you can't, you know, I'm going to, you're going to be the shark and, and I'm going to be the minnow. And, and that is, that is going to be more for that child's development in the spring and creating passion creating fun if you put yeah. your kid and you push him into a line and you say just i mean matt think about these coaches that that yell and scream at eight-year-olds because they're not standing no in a line and like no sense. of course they're not standing in a line yeah they're, they're, they gotta they're, be moving they're, they're, they're losing their minds they gotta be moving it's gotta be fun. i'll give you a great example i have a player on my team right now uh, he's really good he loves the game right and and th this is the kid who shows up just ready to go he's got a smile he says hello to me every time um, having a hard time stopping on his left foot. It's my like mission in a fun way to get this kid to learn how to stop on his left foot before the end of the season. That, that, that's the level of detail. Right. But I want to make it fun. It's not oh, it's driving straight. Come on. Like that's not, that's you not gotta stop make on it. your left foot. Yeah. Well, if you don't stop you on do your it? left foot, when you get to squirts, you, 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 it's not, it's which not, is my left, which is my left foot. <laughs> you know, you're not wrong. You're not oh, wrong I know. about that. All right. So, so again, look, let, let's split it up again, 12 and down. And again, there's always some variance yeah. between the 10 to 14 age just because of puberty. It's got to be fun. Look, look, every pro player we talk to, every pro coach we talk to says love of the game is the primary thing you have to have to even make it outside skill. And I, I Mike, Christy, I've seen, I've seen teenagers burn out and it's devastating for the kid because they don't know what they're doing. It's devastating for the parents because you've invested so much time and energy, Right. You know, you can't relate to an 18 year old, even though you think you want to relate to an 18 year old, you're not 18 anymore. All right. I'm, I'm just coming to the realization. You two, you'll laugh at this that, Hey, my brain's not getting any older. I'm still a kid, but I don't look like one anymore. And guess what? When a kid looks at me, they don't see the kid brain that I have. They see me as I am. And I got to remember that. And that's okay. It's completely okay. It's part of it. Anyway, I'm digressing. Um, I do want to talk about goalie clinics really quick because I think there's a major opportunity with goalie clinics and goalie shooting areas. And then I want to finish the episode up with uh, not clinics, but training areas, training zones, because that's a new thing, or I should say newer for me. that's really popped up over the last 10 years, these year round training centers that I think can be very valuable uh, or fun. They can also be detrimental if you're not careful, but goalie clinics, there's two things about goalie clinics. I want to talk about one. Um, 
I, I had the privilege. We had the privilege of interviewing Mike McKenna, former NHL goalie, moved around a lot. I talked to him the other week again on another show I do, and he keeps preaching for goalies, skating, 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 skating. It's not just about saves. It's not just about angles. If you find a coach that's going to teach you great skating, that's the fundamental starting point to be a great goaltender. Uh, and then obviously the fundamentals beyond that. Um, goalie clinics, if I was the parent of a goalie, the first thing I would ask is, do you have limited availability at your clinic? <laughs> All right, that's the first thing I would ask. I, I do not want to be on the ice with 50 goalies at a time. There's just no way that's going to be ultra beneficial. You'll get something out of it, but that's the first thing I'd look for. Um, Mike, before I go, there's another half to this I want to talk about, but from a goalie-specific point of view, is there any tips or tricks that you have or, or knowledge you know about goalie clinics that, that parents should be asking uh, or kids should be looking out for? Yeah, so the guys that I work with, well, most of the guys that, uh, that I work with that, that run goalie clinics, right, and that this, the, some of the people I work with on how to structure these things is knowing that, that well, that first of all, that, that coach to, to, to student ratio for goaltending is so important because it's such a unique Massive. position. Right. And a kid, a kid at, at 8 and 10 and 12 and 14, they push off differently. They have different strengths. They have different angling issues different it's not the states. same it's not cookie cutter so you can't just say no my kid is always going to learn they're always going to be here this is because goalies are so unique and one of the one of the knocks on goaltending right now right is all these goaltenders are starting to be the same right goaltending. right so it's actually easier to beat goaltenders with higher skill level players <clears throat> because the goalies are becoming very regimented and very structured and very robotic so you know the key for me is finding that goalie coach that understands the fundamentals of movement, but then takes my players' strengths and accentuates them. Right. And you can't do that in a group of 40 goalies. No, um, no. Can't do anything I, in a group of 40. Let's just no, be honest. You can't I, do anything. Well, you know, and I think even, even, even more than yeah. five, you know, and, right. and, and, and I think not only numbers, but are my kids potted in the same skill and age category? So is my eight-year-old with a 15-year-old? No, my eight-year-old's got to be with eight, nine, and 10-year-olds. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's really important. And then the other piece is, you know, understanding, and this is where you, you know, helped your chops, right, as a kid, is find a goalie coach that has a great relationship with great shooters. Not hard shooters, right? not right. psychopaths, but people that know, okay, I need you to put a shot on this kid's glove nine times out of 10. Right. At, at this speed, too. That's the other speed, important part of it. And not, right. not, you know, not ripping pucks over his shoulder because <laughs> right. you want to feel good. Right. And I think that's, you right. know, that to me is a key. Like I, I watch some goalie coaches and, and their, their shooters are like, they're so proud of themselves for just yeah. ripping the hell out of pucks. And <laughs> right. the goalie's like, I haven't even stocked the puck yet. Like what kind of goalie clinic is this? Like right. I want to actually feel the puck hit me. So just look for those two. I mean, those are, I mean, I, I've been, I have a great relationship with a lot of really good goalie coaches. And you know, the one thing I find the most is that they're, they're personal they do a lot of stuff off the ice. They do a lot of video. They do a lot of interaction. It's not just, oh, clinics at four, goes till five. Right. See you later. Right. Especially at that position. It is. And that, that comes back down to that mechanical. system. Do your goalie yeah. coaches have a system? Do they have follow up? Do they have a pre interview? Do they do things that are going to make this specialized position um, advantageous for you? Or are you just a target? If you're just a right. target in a, in, a, in a group of 40 goalies, then buyer beware, know right. that you're going into the net, you're, you're fighting for your life, and then you're getting out of there in an hour. Well, and like you said, Mike, if you're going to do that, you can just get a Milek net and some street pads and have someone shoot on you outside if you want to just be a target. Yeah, even I could shoot on you. Right, right. You know, just, <laughs> you know, just, you know maybe I'll the hit goal, you. The goaltending position is so mechanical. Uh, and, and again, it's one of those things, when you dive into it, the goalies know this, when you dive into it, it's so much more than anybody realizes. So, you know, it's good. We'll just stop the puck. Well, a lot goes into just stopping the puck. Um, in fact, one of my favorite <laughs> quotes, and, and almost any goalie worth their salt will tell you this, that when you see a goalie make an amazing save, they were most likely out of position. They'll all tell you that. When you see the goalie dive across and catch it, that goalie was out of position and made a mistake. And most goalies say that, right? Um, what amazes me about goalies is when they make blind saves because they're just anticipating a shot uh, yeah. you know, from, from the point. And you see this in the NHL all the time. They don't even see the puck. They just kind of feel um, I remember, and this is going to transition. You made a great point about shooters. I, I went to a school up in New Jersey. The guy's name was Jim Mar Margustich, right? And he had this big gym, indoor gym. I remember the first day I go in there as a shooter, I volunteered to shoot. I'm going to talk about that. I go in there, there's got trash cans everywhere hanging from the ceiling with string. I'm like, what is this place? He starts swinging the trash cans back and forth in front of the goalie. 
and I'm, I'm shooting there. And he's like, go ahead. And I'm thinking, wow, I got to get through these trash cans with the puck. But I'm also thinking this goalie has got to make a save. We can't see each other. I was amazed by that. All right. Where I'm going with this though. I'm like, that was great advice on goalies. Shooters are really important. If you're the parent of a shooter, number one, before you send your kid to any kind of goaltending clinic to be a shooter, make sure they have good mechanics, make sure they've gone and learned how to shoot. All right. Or they have an idea. I should say you want a great low cost, potentially free situation for your kid volunteer them to shoot at a goalie clinic when they are ready. Just tagging that on for what you just said, Mike. All right. Two things will happen. One, your kid will get a ton of shots with instruction of shoot here. I talked about before muscle memory. I need 10 shots top right right now. Next thing I've said this on the show many times. They used to call me stone hands when I was a kid. I could not score. I was always a good playmaker. could always pass and move my feet. Could not score. I was always one of the lowest scorers in my team. When that switch uh, went for me, clicked for me, when it clicked the switch, when I flipped the switch, that, I'm trying to, you know, it's early. When I flipped the switch on that was when I went to goalie clinics as a shooter. Because not only did I get a lot of good shooting practice, I learned how goalies worked. When I learned the position of goaltending and how a goalie works, I learned how to score. Right? So you want a very cheap, affordable Situation because most, most most shooters get paid, Mike. I'm just saying they, you make you can earn some money. Take a look at goalie clinics, volunteer again when your kid is ready. You have to have the right demeanor for it. Mike's right. I remember being in college doing this, thinking I want to rip this shot top right. That's not what the high school goalie needed. He needed a 60% speed shot to the glove 10 times in a row. That was a good skill to have. Right. I know, you know, I know a lot. Again, I know a lot of the guys yeah. that work for, for Steve Valaket as shooters and a lot of, you know, but mostly college kids, you know, major junior right. kids. And he's harder on the shooters than he is on the goalies. <laughs> I you know, and so he becomes like the best shooting coach right. because he needs the shooters to, to do something over and over and over again the correct way. So that right. his goalies can react to that. I mean, right. there's yeah. a reason why, like the company Sensorine is out there. Right. In the, the virtual goalie headset, because. It, it eliminates, it can, it can, it can add repetition, right? You know, it can add, you know, a, a, an AI of, of doing well, the me, same thing over and that. over again. So we've got to, yeah. we've got to, we've got to get our, we've got to get our players, our shooters um, to have that AI mentality, right? That it has yeah, to be the same motion every time. Let me dive into that because look, look, I'm a, I'm a big believer of great goalies make great shooters and great shooters make great goalies. And, and D you fit in there somewhere as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I believe that. Look, look, when I, when, when I, the teams I've always loved coaching or being a part of is when we have a great goalie and I have a conversation with that goalie at the beginning of the season, like, look, you're so good. You're going to make our shooters good, but you got to let him, you got to let him shoot on you. You got to let him try. Yeah. You can't get mad when they score on you, you know, it will get better. But when I was doing goalie clinics, you know, one of the things that it's funny, cause I still know a lot of these drills. Um, one of the drills was goalies on the post and follow, follow me at home. Cause this is the type of instruction I think is really important. Goalies on the post. I tap my stick twice. First tap activates him. Second tap says I'm about to shoot, and then I shoot. So tap, tap, shoot. Goalie's off the post in front, ready to go. Not only is that teaching the goalie what he has to do, it's teaching me the timing of the goalie as a shooter. So when I get to a game situation, I'm starting to learn the timing of how goalies work and where they're going to be and how they're going to move. I also learn patience with the puck. How many, how many of you, especially younger players, might squirt – how many of you have a kid who gets on a breakaway or just moves down and just shoots the puck straight into the middle of the net, right in the goalie's chest, right? All right. I've seen it all the time. Now, there's some kids at that age that are awesome. They understand not to do that. But I learned how to look up, move, time it. No, he's going to come, go back to the left. There's a lot of things you can learn at these clinics that you can't learn at just a shooting clinic because most of the time there's no goalie in that. And it's, I'm going to say this again, probably nine times out of 10, if you're a shooter at these things, it's free or you might get paid parents it's like a job i mean look look at look at tim turk he's probably the he's probably the best shooting coach in the nhl right now like the right, top right. guy that everyone goes after mitch marner and all you know all these guys they're all seeking yeah, tim yeah. turk out he wasn't he wasn't an nhl hockey player he was a guy who went to he, he became a shooting instructor right, only right. because he was be, a, a, he had a great shot and he started shooting at goalie practices and also he's like wow i really i really could sell tell the mechanics of what i do here by how the goalie's reacting and I can actually teach this because now I could take the mechanics that we're trying to teach goalies to be successful in and recognize, well, I can counter that because right. I know what we're trying to teach goalies to right. counter. And right. I think right. it's, I think it's a great way for older players to fine tune their game 
because it's not just going down and flipping pucks. It's right. strategically putting pucks in areas of the net that are going to help them become better shooters. Absolutely. And you start, you know, and I, and I think you're absolutely right. It's, you know, one of the worst things for a good team is having a great goalie sometimes in practice. Cause it's right. It's like, I, I, I can't even score. Like, I feel like I, 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 you know, I don't know shooters. how to score. If you do it right, if you do it right, the team will get better and the goalie will get better. I mean, you hear like, stories like a Dominic yeah. Hasek back in the day. And like the guy competed so much that they had to bring in other goalies for practice because <laughs> it wasn't. Like, I had a goalie in England. His name was Yanis. He was a championship goaltender. He was by far the best goalie in the league. I remember I had to have a conversation because he, he got hot. He was a hot, you know, hot hothead, which he kind of won as a goalie. I had to have a conversation with him sometimes like I'm having our shooters challenge you at practice because I said this, yeah, this, you'll make them better. Yeah. And I said, I know you hate getting scored on. I know you hate it. I'm not telling you to let any pucks in the net, but you will make them better if you let them shoot on you. Cause no goalie in the league is as good in you as you. And I, like, I preach this all the time and you can apply this to clinics, right? You make the practices hard. So the games are easy. I'm a big believer of that as you get older. Right. And same thing with clinics. The clinics should be hard. So it becomes easy in a game. But above all, let's let's round this episode out. OK, because we're starting to digress and we get again, the show could go 12 hours every week if we wanted it to. When you're looking for clinics, parents, right, find the value, research the value. There's more resources than ever. Christy makes a great point. Talk to other parents, but go online. You'll see the reviews. That's number one Two, have a conversation with your kid. Um, and make sure that there's some interest, right? I'm not saying again, like, like I don't know any kid. I mean this, and I'm sure there exists, but I don't know anybody who wants to do power skating, <laughs> right? You do it because it's good for your game and there's interest in it, right? And that, that's, that's kind of my, that's my advice for that. Number three, as Christy said, facility, travel, cost. You got to apply that, right? You got to look into that. Number four, last thing is depending on the age of your kid, should they be playing other sports? And let's say this again. Every piece of scientific research today, it might change. Every piece says play multiple sports. If you want to be a better athlete, you can't play the same sport year round. You will burn out as a parent. You'll burn out as a coach. You'll burn out as a player, you'll burn out as a goalie. You burn, you'll burn out as a puck pusher, whatever you are. All right. Nothing can be done. It's too much pressure. They kids need a break from time to time. And it's one of those things. Don't be scared to do it. I, I always joke. My kid plays left-handed. It took me everything. I played right-handed. I'm right-handed. My kid's right-handed. All the research says, if you're right-handed, play left-handed. It was the hardest thing for me to give my kid a left-handed stick in the beginning just because I was programmed. I'm so glad I did it. It's completely right, right? So anyway, I'm going to turn to you both for final thoughts now on clinics. Christy Casciano Burns in Syracuse, New York. You're ready to go after you. Yeah, I, and I'm going to leave you with a final thought from another hockey mom who I just interviewed for an upcoming article for USA Hockey Magazine. Her name is Valerie Comfer. Her daughter, Jessie, is going to be in the Olympics next That's month. Awesome. That's awesome. US. And I asked her about skating year round because I'm thinking you raised an Olympian. I bet your daughter was just 24 seven hockey ever since she was little. And to my surprise, she said, absolutely not. We let Jesse do a lot of other things when she was young. She said, it's really important that you let your kids experience other parts of life you know right. let them do art let them you know be in the high school musical you know right. let them let them enjoy other sports it's really important to give your kids a break so give that some thought before you start signing them up in the spring and all summer for uh year-round hockey maybe to say, christy i'm, I'm just gonna reiterate it. Race. okay <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna reiterate it what you said great athletes are great yeah. athletes they're not yeah. just great hockey players. Most pro athletes can play multiple sports near a pro level. I'm not going to say like a basketball player can jump on the ice and play hockey. I'm just saying that they're pros for a reason. They're athletes. Yeah. And if Olympians yeah. are athletes, obviously, that's awesome. Mike, right. let's turn to you, the birded wonder with the, uh, with the scowl right now. Look like Batman. You need to get your mask, buddy. Oh, now you're smiling. It doesn't work. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Final thoughts on clinics. Yeah, no, I just, I think it's, I think the, at the end of the day, it's buyer beware, do your research, put the, put you, if you're going to go to a clinic, go for the right reasons. And if you, if the clinic's not out there that you want, make it, just go out there and That's find a group of 10 point. parents and, yeah. and make your own clinic. It's, it's not that hard. It's ice time in the spring and the summer is the best time to get it. It's the best time for development. It's the best time to, you know, really, you know, micro teach the skills that you want. And if your kids go into it and you have like-minded and the other thing I would say is, you know, try to find a clinic for your kids that have, have liked skilled and liked ages only because 
point. It's it's intimidating for an eight year old to be out there with twelve year olds, and for a twelve and thirteen year old, it's like, oh, I got to be out here with this eight year old. Like right. they don't see yeah. like in your sk- skating, it doesn't really matter. You're not competing against the kid, but kids just look at it differently. And I think, you know, I think the 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 hot the the, the more intense you can be in your clinics with the same skill level, the better outcome. I think it, you know, I, st- I, I, st- I still believe that steel sharpens steel. And I think that, that, that in a, in a, in that kind of clinic setting is better for development. It's a great point. My, my quick final thought is this is parents, especially of the older, older kids out there. Um, you invested a lot of time, a lot of money into your kid. Uh, I'm not saying this to everybody, but it can become very easy for you with that kind of investment to say, you got to do this because I've put in the time and I've put in the money and uh, you know, this is the direction we're going in. Make sure that, that you're thinking clearly, make sure that this is about your kid and not about the time you've put in and the money you've put in. I'm not saying you have to ignore that, but make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Make sure it's a mutually agreed upon thing that you're doing and not just you're doing it because your kid owes you that. I've seen it. Most likely those parents aren't listening to the show, which is okay. Uh, uh, parents who listen to this show, you want to learn and we appreciate every single one of you. So that's going to do it for this episode on clinics. We hope you find value. As always, you can email us at team at ourkidsplayhockey.com. You can ask the panel any questions you want. We love that you keep listening to us every week. Every week, the audience goes up. Uh, thanks so much for listening to this edition of our edition, edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Check out all the episodes on ourkidsplayhockey.com or wherever podcasts can be heard. With that said, skate on and have a great week, everybody.